Greetings, everybody. Listen, um, this is the uh, apostasy, the great falling away. This is the, I guess, the conclusion. But uh, one other thing I should show you. If you click the link, uh, it'll take you to a video that I did five years ago. But uh, I forgot I even had this. You know, uh, I've got hundreds of videos that I've done in the past. Uh, the first couple of years, they were slideshows. But uh, I think about seven or eight years ago is when I started my bought a microphone. Maybe six. I don't know. But uh, you can click the link in the description or the pinned comment and that'll take you to the conclusion for the uh, apostasy the great falling away but before we do that let's read first timothy chapter six let as many servants as are under the yoke yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor that the name of god and his doctrine be not blasphemed and they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud knowing nothing but dotting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself but godliness with contentment is great gain yeah you know uh, all those uh like kenneth copeland and all those prosperity preachers that uh want you to send them money and then god will bless you you know 10 times and get your financial breakthrough you know they call them charismatics. Well, they think, well, a lot of people think that just because they got Lear jets and a mansion on the beach that, you know, God's blessing them because they're godly. But what, is, what does Paul say? Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself but godliness with contentment is great gain for we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out now i was a volunteer chaplain at the south florida veteran cemetery for a number of years and let me assure you I never saw a casket with a trailer behind it loaded up with all their worldly possessions. You don't bring anything into this world, and you don't carry nothing out. The only thing you're going to have is the treasures you lay up in heaven, but that's another Bible study altogether. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, clothing, and having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. And, you know, that's the thing. When, you're, when you have a lot of money, you're going to attract 
a lot of the wrong kind of people. I couldn't imagine being wealthy and all the wealthy, good-looking, gold-digging women, you know, throwing themselves at you. Yeah, it's... I knew a, a uh, guy that had some money. And, of course, he had a place in Palm Beach. But he also rented a small, modest apartment in on the mainland. And he had uh, his Mercedes that he loved on the beach house. But on the mainland, in his modest small apartment, I don't know, I don't remember what he had, but, you know, Toyota, Honda, whatever it was. Um, and when he'd go out and stuff and meet people that weren't, you know, Palm Beachers or whatever, you'd never know he was rich. I mean, he'd take girls back to his place and, you know, entertain people. And, you know, he didn't want people knowing he had lots of money. And... Uh, he would uh, see how the people were, you know. And if a girl liked him for him, eventually, you know, he might show them that, yeah, he was in Palm Beach. And if they really, really changed and then started pressuring them to get married and stuff, he'd dump them quick, knowing that, you know, they just wanted money. But, uh, you know, he wanted to see how people were. But you'd never know he was rich to meet him for the first time, you know. But, uh, you know, that's the thing. Verse 10. For the love of money, the love of money is the root of all evil. Now, people will argue and say, well, Satan doesn't love money. But the Bible's not a book about the fallen angels. The fallen angels are mentioned the angels that didn't fall are mentioned. But the Bible's not about the fallen angels. It's talking, the Bible's the book of Christ and his redeeming of the children of Adam via Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Israel. So when it says, for the love of money is the root of all evil, it's talking about Humans having the love of money. Uh, I've heard it said that um, bad people love money and use people, use people and love money, and good people use money and love people. I hope I said that right. Good people love people and use money, and then bad people love money and use people. Verse 10, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience. Boy, that's something I could sure use. Lord, give me patience and give it to me now. Meekness, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Jesus Christ, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable until appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his times he will show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. 
laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so-called. Oppositions of science falsely so-called. Think evolution. Verse 21, which some professing have erred concerning a faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. All right. Uh, take a look at the, um, in the comments section, the pinned comment. I got the link there where I do uh, apostasy, the great falling away. That's going to be the conclusion. But um, when you look at the, uh, all these people like Kenneth Copeland, you know, that tell you, uh, you know, these people, their followers are not doing God any favor by sending this guy with a Learjet and a mansion on the beach any favors by sending him money, you know. I mean, those con men, what they've done is they say, well, you know, if you send me $1,000, God will bless you with $10,000. At least that's what they want you to believe. So these people aren't giving to bless the Lord. They're giving from their own greed. You know, they're, they're giving to get. I mean, you know, when you give something to somebody and you don't expect something back, that's when you get the blessing of God. You know, I, I it's just unbelievable. And people fall for this stuff. You know, you know the crew, Benny Hinn, Copeland, uh, Creflo send me many a dollar. Uh, you know, that crew. I forget which... Are they on the 700 Prophets of Baal Club or is that TBN? I forget which, but, you know. Throw them all in a bag, shake them up, spill it out, and they'll all go to hell faster and you can say, wow, what happened? Not much difference between them. All I know is if, if they don't teach repentance, they're false. Anybody that doesn't teach repentance. I mean, Christ preached repentance. John the Baptist preached repentance. And, uh, you know, like I say, take a look at people's uh, statement of faith. And, uh, you know, that's a very, very, very good indication of what they believe. So... And like I tell everybody, I, I believe the King James Bible, and I believe in the Nicene Creed, C-R-E-E-D. That's a Latin word that means I believe. Uh, the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed. Uh, Nicaea was a city in Greece where they stamped out the statement of faith. And I can defend every line from the King James Bible. So, you know, that's, what can I tell you? All right, take a look at the, uh, the link below on apostasy. It'll be the uh, conclusion of the series. I've turned it into a playlist. Um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.